In today's video, we're going to talk about core aeration for your lawn. Now, like a lot of things in life, if you just knew those tricks before you started, the job could be a lot easier. And in this video, I am going to talk about how to do it, but more importantly, the focus is to make aerating your lawn easier by sharing these simple tricks, many of which you need to know before you even start aerating. So watch this video and I'll show you how to make the job that much easier. Now before you even begin, you've got to think about when you're going to aerate your lawn. And the fall is going to be the best time for most people to aerate their lawns. Temperatures are cooler, the grass is growing well, and if you're going to add some seed, fall is the right time of year to do it. Now that we know when we want to aerate, we've got to think about the equipment. And you might be thinking that it's no big deal because you just go to the rental shop and they'll give you an aerator. Well that's right, but you want to know something before you even go, and that is to get the right kind of aerator. Now what you're looking at here is a traditional style aeration, and that's where you rent the aerator like this, you'll make a pass, and when you get to the end you'll notice that I have to lift the machine up and then I can turn it. Now this is why most people hate aerating, because once you've done this a bunch of times, your body's worn out and you just beat. But something changed with aerators over the past 10 years that is great news for everybody, and that's that there are new style aerators that allow turning in place. And as you can see here, I'm doing a figure eight. I've never lifted the machine once. Now turning this is still a little bit harder than just say mowing the lawn, but it's so much easier than raising and lowering the machine. So the biggest thing you need to know is before you rent your machine is to call the store and tell them you want to rent an aerator that allows in place turning. And hopefully they'll have that kind in stock. But if they don't, you want to call around and find one that has this because the job will be so much easier. Now that you've chosen the right machine that can turn, you've got to get it home. Now the good news is the store's going to put it on the truck or the car for you, so that part's easy. But once you get home, you're on your own and you've got to get it off. So this is where my next tip really comes into play, because these machines were built for this and they actually have the ability to get a little bit lighter. Now doing this can make these things a lot easier to get on and off your truck. And that's because these machines have removable weights. It's not obvious at first. But when you look closer, you're going to realize that you've either got weights on the side or on the back that can be removed. And doing this makes the machine a lot lighter, so you're always going to want to do this before you lift the machine and it'll make the job a little bit easier. Now with our machine in the ground, we've reinstalled our weights, but there's one more thing that we need to do, and that's actually to add even more weight. And we're going to do that by filling our water tank in the front of the machine. Now almost all of these quality machines have some type of a water tank, and again, that's so that we can add weight when we want it, but when we're going to reload this back in our car or truck, we can take the weight off by draining this tank out. Don't forget to fill this tank because doing this is going to make the machine penetrate the ground so much more. Now our machine's almost ready to go and some basic tips about operating it. Now this runs just like a lawnmower, it's got a gas valve, a choke, and an on off switch. But the differences are going to be about these extra levers and handles. Now each aerator can vary a little bit, but almost all of them are going to have the same functional controls. And that's going to be one lever that's going to engage those tines, and the tines are what's spin in the ground and poke the holes to aerate. And that bottom lever there is the one that's going to allow you to lower the machine. So when this machine is sitting like this, you can roll it anywhere because those tines are not in the ground. It only penetrates the ground when you finally lower that lever. If you've got an irrigation system, you're going to want to mark where those sprinkler heads are. You can chance at an air rate without doing this, but there's a good chance you're going to hit one of them and you will destroy the head. So I recommend getting these inexpensive flags, getting a helper if you can, and turn your sprinklers on, have them mark where they are, and then you can just avoid these flags when you're aerating. I also highly recommend that you mow the lawn prior to aerating. This is going to let it just get that much closer to the lawn and make sure those tines penetrate properly. You're going to want to use your mower's adjustment on the deck to reduce your height of cut. I like to mow anywhere between about an inch and a half to two and a half inches when I aerate. You don't have to scalp it, but cut it short enough so that your aerator can get close to the soil. Aerating in a way is easier than mowing. When you mow, you've got to follow straight lines. But when you're aerating, it doesn't matter if you go in straight lines or zigzag around. The important thing is here you want to get as much coverage as possible. But don't stress if you can't hit a certain area or you go over an area twice. None of that matters. Every hole is beneficial and your goal is to just do as much as you can without wearing yourself out. 
Now, even with an easy steer type machine, it is a lot of work to aerate your lawn and it does take some time, but doing these things has made this much easier for me and I don't get nearly as worn out as I used to. And when you're done aerating, you're gonna have thousands of little cores all over your lawn and that's a good thing because those holes are gonna allow water, air, fertilizer, and nutrients to get to the root system. But those little cores will actually break down and decompose and they kind of even top dress your lawn a bit because they are comprised of soil. So you never would wanna collect them or remove them because there's no benefit because you'd basically be throwing soil away. And with the aeration job complete, we've just got to prep the machine to get it back to the store. So we're going to remove those weights again and don't forget to drain that tank on the front because you want this machine as light as possible when you put it back in your truck. So getting the right aerator and knowing a few tricks can make doing this job so much easier. I struggled for a lot of years and I finally got to this point where I could do it easily without all that stress. So I hope this video was helpful to you as you learn to aerate your lawn because it's something you're probably going to do at least every year. So being efficient at it and having it be easier makes all the difference. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and comment below and stay tuned for more videos coming up.